I'm Malika Andrews. We are releasing parts of the NBA schedule today, and we have all hands on deck to help us cover it. And here's what we have going on. Christmas will be in August. Well, kind of. The schedule release is going to be in August, and we break down the star-studded slate of games. Knicks all-star Julius Randle is stopping by, and we'll get his thoughts on New York's offseason moves so far. And Joel Embiid woke up with 196 million new reasons to smile. How should Philly build around him now? So, get your head out of the clouds, or don't if you're Jericho Sims. Whatever you do, keep it locked, because a full hour of the jump starts right now. You're watching The Jump. I'm Malika Andrews in for Rachel Nichols this week. We have a packed show, so let's get right to it. Let's run it back with the reveal of the 2021 Christmas Day slate. At noon Eastern on ESPN, it's the Knicks and the Hawks in a rematch of that intense first-round playoff series. Will Trey Young put a bow on his bow? And then at 2.30 Eastern on ABC, the defending champion Bucks will host the Celtics. Jason Tatum and Giannis on the same court is going to be must-see TV. And then at 5 o'clock Eastern on ABC, it's the defending Western Conference champ Suns facing off against the Warriors. It could be an epic backcourt battle between the Splash Brothers on one side, lining up against Devin Booker and CP3. On ESPN and ABC at 8 Eastern, it's the Lakers and the Nets. Katie, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook. Yeesh! Enough said. We're laughing in studio and wrapping it up on the night on ESPN. It's Luka Doncic and the Mavericks on the road against Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz. It could be showtime from two of the league's top stars. And here are the opening night games that our broadcast partners over at TNT will carry. It's Nets Bucks that opens the season, followed by the Warriors at the Lakers. More to come on those games a little bit later, but it is time to run it back. We're welcoming in Adrian Wojnarowski here to talk about the release of our schedule. He is our senior insider. Thanks so much for joining the Jump Woj. We have to start with the Lakers and Nets on Christmas Day. What are your expectations for that game from a league perspective? Uh, Malika, th these are the this is the battle of the Titans, and I think everybody's you know hoping that this is going to be a game uh, that that you're going to see both teams at full strength, and the idea of that kind of star power in one place, and all the storylines within it. I think the Lakers in a Western Conference with no Kawhi Leonard mm. and and no Jamal Murray in uh, Denver to certainly start the season, and maybe for much of the season. You know, the Lakers are, are certainly going to play the role as favorites. And this is a Nets team, you know, that, that Milwaukee got past in the East last year, but without Kyrie Irving, with James Harden really on one leg in that series, and a chance now to see both these teams uh, at full strength. It's going to be remarkable. And, and think of the uh, Oklahoma City alumni group in that game, Harden and KD yeah. in Brooklyn. And, of course, now Russell Westbrook with the Lakers. That is a mammoth Christmas Day matchup. Mammoth is right. And for the second time this week, also, Woj, you reported on a Patrick Beverly trade. This time he's headed from the Grizzlies to the Timberwolves. Can you give us a little insight into how that trade came about? Well, Gerson Rosas, the president in uh, Minnesota, and his new head coach, Chris Finch, they both were with Patrick Beverly in Houston and the idea of bringing him in, you know, to a roster that's still, you know, fairly young and developing, bringing his leadership, his toughness, certainly his ability to defend the ball and play a role on that team. You know, it made perfect sense uh, for the Timberwolves. Uh, and I think, listen, Memphis in making that trade with the Clippers, mm. you know, all three players who came in, you may see none of them uh, opening night in Memphis. Certainly Beverly is out now, Rajon Rondo, uh, Daniel Latoro, uh, they they have a very good young roster in Memphis. Really, not any room, uh, and, and maybe not fits here. So, but I think certainly for Minnesota, the idea of Beverly really resonated with Rosas, with Chris Finch, and and he goes in there and he's going to play an important role for that team as they try to move closer uh, to, to getting perhaps in. Uh, contention for the play-in tournament. Absolutely, and, and Patrick Beverly is such a culture cornerstone, and you've been everywhere this week, Rhodes. You reported on the Celtics extending Marcus Smart last night. What made the Celtics decide to commit to Smart long-term? Listen, he's such an integral part mm. of that team, and you know, certainly uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown are the two all-stars on that team. 
uh, but, but Marcus Smart has been really the heart and soul of that organization, uh, coming off perhaps his best season last year. And, and a deal now that locks him in, no player option, so he's under contract for the next five years. Uh, Robert Williams, uh, the Celtics young center, he's another player on deck. Uh, he's up for his rookie extension. Boston would like to get that done also uh, this summer. And, well, listen, they're not going to have cap space next season, next summer. You look around and you go, who are they getting it mm. for? It's, it's really uh, turning out to already be probably a very weak free agent class. And so I think for Boston to get their key players locked up, you know, and continue to try to build now around, you know, certainly they're two all-stars, but then Marcus Smart, you know, who plays such an important role for that team, uh, they were able to offer him that $77 million. Uh, it, it was a max raise uh, with a year left on his contract. He got the full $77 million, and now Marcus Smart continues in Boston, and, and I think this is a team that uh, you know, is still going to be very formidable in the East uh, next season. It's certainly going to be interesting to see how the East shakes out. Woj, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy Thanks, schedule Malika. to spend some time with us. Appreciate you. Now joining me to talk more about the big Nets and Lakers matchup on Christmas Day is our NBA champ, Richard Jefferson, and NBA insider Dave McMiniman. And I want to start with you, Dave. You're around the Lakers daily. What intrigues you most about this matchup? Well, think back to the two times the Lakers and Nets played each other last year. Mm -hmm. February... There's no Durant and no Anthony Davis right. on the court. April, Richard, I will wear yoga pants similar to you're wearing today. If you can name me <laughs> the don't. three leading scorers for the Lakers in that game. The three leading scorers for the Lakers in what When game? they played the Nets in April. You might have even cover the game. It's zero chance. <laughs> uh, let's see, Kyle Kuzma, uh, Alex Caruso. Yeah, I'll stop you there. You're along the right lines, though. Mm. Andre Drummond, no longer a Laker. Mm. Dennis Schroeder, no longer Wait, a Laker. Drummond was a Laker? <laughs> <laughs> and Ben McLemore, no longer a Laker. So in that game, no LeBron, no AD, no Harden. So the fact that we can actually see what these teams are supposed to look like with the sprinkled in new pieces in a Patty Mills, with uh, Carmelo Anthony, Russell Westbrook, obviously, to me, is that's the reason you tune in. You get to see what these teams actually look like. Yeah, no, I, I think it's going to be exciting. That Those are one of the games. That every time you look at the Christmas Day schedule, it's always – one, maybe two games that you really look forward to. And mm. I think this is the game that people were probably looking forward to last year. And even like, oh, okay, right. well, these will be the teams that we'll see in the postseason. It'll be Nets, possibly Lakers. And so I think now to get both teams in a position, and I think the key thing is, are they all going to be healthy at that time? That's going to be the most important thing. But it's going to be fun. When you get the best players, when you get the best teams on Christmas Day, that's just a basketball player's dream. And it's a basketball fan's dream. So I'm excited to watch. Watch. Well, this is certainly one of the games you're going to be taking a break from eating your pancakes. If you're a really, really late riser, if you're having breakfast for dinner, this is going to be one of the games you're going to tune into because in part of some of those big three parts that they have. So, Richard, how would you assess that Nets big three versus the Lakers big three that they've now put together? Well, again, it's, it's so difficult to really talk about both teams. Uh, I think the Lakers team, I think Russell Westbrook helps them in the 82. Mm. And those 82 games, we know that Russell is a monster. And it's going to come down to how well they can mesh over the 16. And that's the journey to win a championship. With the Brooklyn Nets, I think they mesh perfectly. And I think when you add guys like Patty Mills uh, to that bench, you re-sign Blake Griffin, mm. uh, you bring back Bruce Brown, I think their bench is filling out extremely nicely. Uh, now, when you look at the Nets, I know they added Monk. Uh, or, or when you had talking about the Lakers, you added Monk, you added some other guys but I think the biggest question one I think is going to be health mm. for the Brooklyn Nets sure. and with the Lakers I think is going to be three-point shooting in the postseason not necessarily over the course of the regular season and Frank Vogel said this is going to be a fast breaking group next year with LeBron and Russell and that sounds great because both those guys in the open court are incredible and they're the two last assist leaders that the NBA has but in order to do that you got to get steals and deflections and defensive rebounds you sent out your two best perimeter defenders in Alex Caruso and Contavious Caldwell Pope. Who's going to fill those spots in order to allow LeBron and Russell Westbrook to play that style? And that, to me, is the biggest question for the Lakers. Well, re really quickly, the one thing I will say to add to your point is kind of Bron, maybe not as much, but Russell Westbrook, they're both still one-man fast breaks. Yes. So now you have two of them that could be 